Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land. Can you believe it's Thursday already? The weeks are flying. I'm Raleen Marks, and I bring you the top stories from Israel and surrounds every Monday to Thursday. If you are viewing this on Facebook, we would really appreciate it if you share as uh, much as possible. At the moment, Facebook are clamping down on this type of content or any content that is seen as vaguely political. So we need your help to uh, help educate as many people or inform as many people as possible about uh, the Middle East, what goes on here, what makes the headlines and the truth behind some of those headlines. And uh, just a reminder, you can also view us on YouTube. You can find us at the Israel Brief. All you have to do is click on the red subscribe button. But let's get into those top stories. And this is one of intrigue. And uh, one really has to question whether or not the London Jewish Chronicle has blown the lid off a, a top secret uh, mission to Iran. What am I talking about, you want to know? Well, let me tell you. The London Jewish Chronicle has published an expose on the assassination of top Iranian nuclear scientist Mohammad Fakhrajideh that took place just several months ago. Now, Israel will not uh, um, deny or confirm whether or not we were involved in any such operation. But according to this expose, which cites um, sources within the Mossad, they say that at least 20 agents from Iran and from Israel surveilled Fakhrajideh for at least eight months and managed to smuggle in a one-ton gun that carried out the assassination. Fakhrajideh uh, was uh, hit by the gun and later died of his wounds in hospital. So uh, very, very interesting. Very interesting to see that this has been made public. And uh, while we are talking about the public and we're talking about things held in the public, yesterday the Knesset um, um, held a hearing in which the uh, Ministry of Strategic and Diaspora Affairs presented to the Knesset Committee on Diaspora and Immigration Affairs what they see could be a national response to hate speech online. As we know, social media platforms have become hotbeds of activities, hence uh, the uh, political posts being clamped down on. However, anti-Semitic comments have not been um, taken to task as much as they should. And this is an area where Israel is fighting quite vociferously and calling on social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and others to clamp down and end hate speech. Now they say that this kind of action should be taken across the board on all social media platforms, not just on some of them. I know that uh, on Twitter, for example, you can can flag and you can complain about a post and either they will tell you that it doesn't violate their community standards or they will block that page. Uh, but we are saying that, you know, while freedom of expression is very, very important and is, uh, you know, one of the great bastions of a democracy, hate speech is not. And there is a line where the freedom of speech crosses into hate speech. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it sounds quite interesting when we have been saying over the last couple of weeks that our exposure has been limited because we bring a political perspective while uh, anti semites and other hate groups are allowed to comment. So essentially they're calling for a cross-the-board response and are suggesting that maybe they look at IRA, the uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's uh, working definition of anti-Semitism, to see what constitutes anti-Semitism. Last night, Facebook announced that they will be uh, um, clamping down quite vociferously on political posts in certain parts of the world. They say while the political situation in the United States is still sensitive and while we are just a, a, a couple of months post-election, they feel that they need to take the temperature down a bit. But hey, it makes an interesting debate. Is this uh, 
allowing for the freedom of uh, expression, which we all should be entitled to an opinion, is it pushing a specific uh, agenda? And uh, if this is happening, why are they still allowing for anti-Semitic comments online? Very, very interesting. We're going to see how this progresses. And our last story takes us back to where Israel is currently with the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've had some good news. Our daily rate of infections is at its lowest since December. Very good news for Israelis indeed. Today, some schools across the country in areas where there are, are low infection rates started to open up. I think many parents in those areas are extremely relieved. And uh, the health ministry has also announced that unless you are being vaccinated or have been vaccinated, you will not be allowed to enter places like cafes, like gyms, like malls. This is really part of the plan to get the country vaccinated. And also, uh, it's, it's kind of um, a message out there to people who refuse to get it done that if you don't get vaccinated, your life will be restricted. And this is to protect other members of society. So those are the top stories making headlines. Don't forget that this weekend you can check out our Facebook page uh, and to see where in the country we are. Leave us a message. Wish us Shabbat Shalom. We love it when you do. We also post a, an article from our archives every Saturday. So uh, don't forget to come back and see what we are talking about this Saturday. And uh, uh, just a reminder, sorry, frog in the throat there, that uh, we're online on our website at www.layoftheland.online. We are very proud and privileged to have uh, been given an exclusive article by the world's most famous Nazi hunter, Dr. Ephraim Zurov, on uh, the government in Lithuania and their lack of responsibility for uh, the, the perpetrators in that country of the Holocaust. It's on Facebook, it's on our website. Please share it and help us educate and inform people as much as possible about the Holocaust and interact with us on Twitter where you will find us at Lay of the Land 5. So uh, with the last edition of the Israel Brief for the week, I'm Rolene Marks, wishing you all a safe and a healthy weekend. Chodesh Tov and uh, Shabbat Shalom and we'll meet again on Monday.